Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, oh, com- can we continue to lift his name up as we begin this service? Oh, hallelujah. This is a great day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a great king today. Uh, he's a risen king. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. Uh, I want to share a a verse of Scripture today as we start this service this morning. Welcome to Landmark Church. Thank you for being here this morning. Amen. Making this a, a part of your day. Praise God. I am so thankful to be in the presence of the Lord on this Easter. Sunday. Praise God. Romans chapter number one and verse number four. It is one of my favorite verses regarding uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it simply says this, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Amen. Uh, I love that word declare. Because that word declare means there's no room for argument, no room for anything else. Uh, Amen. It just means that this is the way that it is. Uh, Amen. And I am so thankful today to be able to, to, to declare unto you that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. Amen. Come on, can we offer him some worship and praise? Uh, oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, praise your wonderful name. God, we love you. God, we praise you and we thank you today. Uh, Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, hallelujah. And so today, I want you to join with this worship team uh, as we magnify the Lord and lift him up. And I want our praise uh, to be equally as powerful today as the power of his resurrection. Amen. You hear what I said today? Our praise ought to reflect the power of the resurrection. And our praise, uh, it ought to reflect what Jesus has done for us. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We love you today. Oh, God, we love you today. Amen. So let's open up our hearts. uh, Amen. And let's worship today as if we really believe that Jesus is alive. Praise God.
Jesus. He is worthy of all praise, all glory, and all honor. Hallelujah, Jesus. so thankful for Jesus and I'd like to say welcome everybody this morning Amen this is the best place in town to be it is this is where you find God this is where you feel God hallelujah Jesus I want to feel him I want to experience him Amen hallelujah Amen Lord Jesus God we're grateful Lord God that you not only resurrected, Lord Jesus, but you do hear and you do answer prayer, Lord. God, in this morning, Lord Jesus, God, you see these needs, you see this list, Lord. Lord Jesus, hallelujah, Lord God, we just pray that you have your will, that your way be done in each and every one of these needs, Lord Jesus. God, Becky and have a team calling, Lord Jesus. God, I just pray that you touch and you minister, Lord Jesus, to them, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Give them souls for their labor, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, and I see that Susie's here, Lord. God, I just ask you to continue, Lord, to touch her body, Lord Jesus, to minister to her need, God. We thank you for Sister Susie, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God, and you have your way, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Kisty Myers, Lord God, we bring her before you, Lord God. Lord, we ask you to heal her body. Lord Jesus. God, that you touch her, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. You are a healer, Lord. God, touch Larry, Lord Jesus. Minister to him. Heal him, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you for it, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. God, we ask you to touch Wayne and Indy today, God. Touch them, Lord Jesus. You know their need, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. God, and we pray for Richard Smith's brother, Lord God. We just pray, Lord, that you help him, Lord. Give him a speedy recovery. Help him, Lord Jesus. Give him strength in his body, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, touch him and heal him, Lord. Thank you for it, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. You're in the heart saving business, Lord, and you're also in the heart healing business, God. Help him, Lord Jesus. Lord, Sister Jennings, God, touch her body, Lord. You know what she has need of, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, and touch Christiana, Lord God. Touch her, Lord Jesus. And Alyssa and her family, Lord God, minister to them, Lord Jesus. Lord, and we pray today for Heidi, God. Lord, that you continue to work in her body, Lord. Thank you for it, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. Can you give him a hand? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated for a moment today. I'd like to move quickly uh, through our announcements and to get right back to worship this morning. Amen. And so we're already, today is the last day of March. I cannot believe that, but here we are. And so our upcoming schedule, uh, our, our regular schedule is set Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for worship Tuesday at 11 a.m. We have Weepers and Warriors prayer meeting, and then Wednesday night at 7 p.m. we have a midweek uh, service right here. Amen. And so that's every week. Praise God. Let's move forward. In our chapter of the week program, uh, we're still continuing. We're about to finish Hosea this week. And everybody said, yes. Yes. Amen. And we'll move right into the book of Joel in the coming weeks. But uh, join us in, in reading uh, through this chapter this week. And then today, uh, it's not the final deadline, but today is the uh, day for our Save Our Children's Offering. I sent some text messages out and reminders about that, and we we have had this announcement up for six weeks or so, and so I hope that uh, you will join us in giving a generous offering to save our children. We've talked about what that is for. It's the Children's Ministries Department, 
of the United Pentecostal Church and here in the state of Oregon. It goes to help things like junior youth camp, uh, Bible quizzing, and uh, the, the Holy Ghost rallies and crusades that we just had over in Roseburg a couple weeks ago that was paid for. And there's many other ministries. Uh, portions of this go to uh, a, a Tupelo Children's Mansion, which is a children's orphanage that we sponsor, um, and just many, many different wonderful causes. And so if you could help us out uh, with this, uh, if, you, if you're ready to give that today, we'll certainly receive that. And we will be letting you know when's the actual last date that uh, we have to have that in. It's usually in a couple of weeks from now. But amen. Our offering plates are here at any time in the service, like except maybe when I'm talking, giving announcements or preaching. Amen. <laughs> Unless you got 10 grand you want to give, you can interrupt me anytime. Praise God. Hallelujah. We'll, we'll, we'll stop the show for that. Praise God. Amen. Let's move forward. Uh, ladies' prayer is on April the 12th at 11 a.m. That's at Sister Sandy's home. All the ladies are invited to attend that. And what else do we have for you moving forward? Coming up uh, in a couple of weeks on April the 13th, we actually have two events that are happening. One is for youth and one is for ladies. Both of these are taking place. I'll show you the ladies' event in a moment. Uh, but both of these events are taking place in Myrtle Creek. Uh, for the youth, it is a what we call Move the Mission kickoff service. And so there will be a time of worship. And then after that, there's going to be food. And uh, those that want to will be going. There's a small bowling alley uh, there in uh, Myrtle Creek. And they will be going there to have some fun and fellowship after that. We want to take our van. And so any of our youth and uh, anybody that wants to go to that, you can join us. Uh, for that, and so we'll we'll try to be organizing that a little bit more as we get closer, a couple weeks from now. Also, uh, I couldn't increase the size of this. This is the format that was sent to me, so I just put it on there twice. Amen. So you're not actually you're not actually seeing double today. Amen. But this is the ladies' event that's happening on the same day, also at, at Myrtle Creek, uh, Sister. Uh, Heidi Tucker, who is our Section 3 ladies uh, uh, representative for the ladies committee for our district, she wanted to have just a time of fellowship for ladies. So that's also going to be in Myrtle Creek. It's going to be at noon at that same bowling alley. So I don't know if she's going to have the ladies bowl and then make them go to church. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Amen. But uh, that's coming up. There is a small cost of $10 for that. And so all of, this is open to all ladies that want to attend that uh, that time of fellowship there in conjunction with that that uh, youth rally that's coming up a little bit later. This ladies' event starts at noon, and the youth event starts at 2. So there will be a little bit of overlap, more than likely. Amen. Praise God. Let's move on. Marriage retreat at the end of April, April 25th through 27th in Seaside. Flyers downstairs with, that you can uh, get more information. Praise God. And then men's retreats coming up in May. Again, a flyer is downstairs with more information. The registration cost will be going up uh, the closer that we get to that date. So, is that everything? Praise God. Amen. One day, maybe, the Lord being our helper, we can kill the announcements, and uh, they, will, they won't resurrect. Hallelujah. Amen. When that, but, but Jesus, he's alive and well today. Amen. Praise God. Oh, come on. I said Jesus is alive and well today. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You are here today because Jesus is alive. That's right. Amen. Oh, do you hear what I said? You're here because Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Because of his mercy, because of his grace, because of his love, because he came out of the grave with power. Amen. We can be here to worship him today. Amen. Let's continue. And offer great praise to our great God today in Jesus' Hallelujah, name. Hallelujah, Jesus. King of all kings, born in a manger, the great Talk. 
Can you lift your hands all across this house? Holy, all creation, all creation cries. Holy, Come on, 
Oh, he's holy today. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Holy. Holy forever. Come on, lift your voice. I know it's a new song. We're going to sing it again a couple more times. And the angels cry. As you worship him today, be drawn into his presence right now. Hallelujah. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. Oh, let the holiness of God just move into this house right now. Hallelujah. The angels cry. this in your spirit today. Hallelujah. And the angels cry. Holy. All creation cries. Holy. You are lifted high. Holy. Holy forever. I wonder if we can do it with no music. And the Come on, lift your voice. Holy. Yeah, it's beautiful. Holy. You are lifted high. Holy. Holy forever. And the angels cry. And the angels cry. Holy, all creation cries. Holy, you are lifted high. Lord, he's lifted high. Holy, hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy forever. One more time, as you stand to your feet today, can you lift your hands all across this house? Oh, oh. Creation cries, holy. You are lifted high. You're lifted high, holy, holy, holy forever. I think we can do it one more time. Hallelujah! Oh, and the angels cry. Hallelujah! Holy. Oh, holy. You are lifted You're high. You're lifted high. Hallelujah. Holy. Holy. Holy forever. Oh, praise God. Can you lift your voice with praise and adoration right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. I can't really describe for you what it is today. But there's something about this song. For me personally, it just kind of transports me right into the presence of God. Hallelujah. And I was, Darrell and I, a few weeks ago, we were having a Bible study together. We were talking about the holiness of God. And we thought we were talking about where Moses, the burning bush, and he was there at that bush and it was on fire, but it was not consumed. And the voice that spoke to him basically and said, Take off your shoes for the ground you're standing on is holy ground. Do you know, do you know why the ground was holy? The ground was holy because the presence of God was there. 
Do you know why this service is holy today? Because the presence of God is here. All those things in the Old Testament that in the temple and tabernacle that were called all the, you know, the all the instruments, they were called holy. It was called a holy day, a, a holy convocation, a, the holy bread, all of these things. They were all called holy because they had been touched and consecrated by the presence of God. And when we, when we realize today how vast and how awesome and how holy our God is, but yet my life without Him is not holy. But you know what, what makes me holy today? You know what makes you holy? It's the presence of God touching your life and dwelling in you, walking in you, living in you. And I don't know about you today. I know it's Easter and we're going to talk about that. But I, just, I do, I want the holiness of God to just sweep into this place and bring us to a place of worship. When Isaiah, he saw a vision and it was a, it was a bad time for him. A king had died that he was very fond of. But he said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. And he is high and lifted up. Yes. His train filled the temple. He said, I fell down and, and he, he said, I began to say, I'm not worthy at all of this. But the holiness of God moved in his life at that moment. And, and he realized his great need for God and how inadequate he is, or he was, as a man. And that's what the holiness of God, it'll do to you. It'll make you realize how awesome he is and how much we need him and how much to lean, that we have to lean on him today. Praise God. Can you just lift your hands once again? Praise God. Can you add your voice to that today? Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's seek his presence here for a moment. Hallelujah. Allow yourself to be moved into the presence of God. All creation cries. Come on, we're going to sing it a couple more times today. Hallelujah. I want every person in this house to be moved into the presence of God today. Come on, I can't make you. I can just encourage you. I can lead you. I can exhort you, but you got to want it. You got to desire it today. You got to reach for it. Come on, if you want to be in His presence today, you got to reach for Him. Hallelujah. You're lifted high. Oh. Holy forever, hallelujah, and the angels cry, holy, come on, he's holy, he's high, he's lifted up, he's risen today, he's worthy, he's worthy today, hallelujah, oh, just one more time, and the Angels cry. Lord, allow yourself to flow in the Spirit right now. Allow the Spirit to move in you and move you to a place of worship right now. Uh, hallelujah. Holy. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. His presence is here. I'm, I'm telling you, His presence is here today. And he's here for you to touch your life, to touch your heart, your spirit, to minister to you. He's here to receive your worship today. Hallelujah. You just got to push into his presence. 
Hallelujah. You got to push into his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. 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 Church, please work with me here for a minute. I, I just don't feel a release to move forward yet. The presence of the Lord is in this house, and we need to honor His presence with our praise and with our worship today. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, I bless you today. I bless you today. I bless you today. Oh, God, that our hearts, God, Lord, would be inspired, God, to worship you. Oh, to give you the glory today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we're standing, Lord, in your presence. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So we are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are Come on, this is your opportunity to worship Him. You need to let some doubts and some worries and some fears anxieties, let it go today and lose yourself in worship to the King. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. can do better than that for a risen Savior. Come on, I believe we can do better than that for a risen King today. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to take you this morning. Sunday school can be dismissed. Praise God. Thank you for being here in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 28. If today is your first day with us, we want to welcome you uh, to Landmark Church where we believe anything is possible. Amen. Amen. Amen, Landmark Church. We believe anything is possible. Praise God. If you are, uh, if today is your first day with us in the seat back in front of you, there's a card. Um, it's got some blanks on it. You can fill in those blanks or you can scan the QR code. And that just helps us keep up with who is here. It also helps us keep you informed about what is 
going on at Landmark Church, but uh, I want to say thank you today for joining us uh, for worship on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. We're going to read today, uh, beginning in uh, Matthew chapter 28, and again, I know some of you just got comfortable, but could you stand with me? Amen. Praise God. We're going to read Matthew 28. If you'll stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. And his countenance was like lightning, and his raiment was white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And I need to make a note right there for next year, and I'll preach that verse next year. Praise God. Aren't you glad that when Jesus comes out of the, the tomb, amen, said, for fear of him, the keepers, those keepers, those were the guys that were supposed to be making sure he didn't come out. But see, those things that had, were supposed to have a hold on him, those things that were supposed to be in control of the situation, those things that they began to shake. Come on, when the son of righteousness rises in your life, Come on, when Jesus is really alive in your life, those things that are supposed to keep you, that, that were supposed to keep you bound. Come on, there's some things. There, there's some things that keeping some of you bound. You need Jesus to rise up in your life. Amen. To begin to break those things, to shake those things, and, and to cause those things to be like dead in your life. Praise God. Maybe I shouldn't save that for next year. Just go on and preach it today. <laughs> Praise God. Why do you want to be kept by that which is keeping you in bondage? Right? There are some of us, we are so used to our bondage that we prefer our bondage over our freedom. Because we're comfortable with, us, with it. All right, verse 5. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here. Everybody say, he's, he wasn't there. He but he has risen. Come on, say, he has risen. risen. As he said, he told them he was going to rise. And then there was the invitation, come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he's risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. Amen. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. Praise God. Aren't you glad for the resurrection today? Amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. Kayla, if you'll help me out back there as you're already doing. Amen. With my, here's what I want to preach to you today. I want to preach hope from above. Hope from above. Would you high five your neighbor today and tell him hope from above? <laughs> Praise God. Here, come on. I, I want you to do that again like you was at a football game or something like that. Uh, Praise God. Amen. Praise God. In Jesus' name, you could be seated. 
I read that text to you today because it is the story of the resurrection. And so I felt that it would be appropriate to read that. But uh, I'm not actually going to preach for that text. Praise God. Hope from above. On May the 23rd in 1939, the USS Squalus, or Squalus, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, S-Q-U-A-L-U-S, Squalus, I believe. It was a submarine that was uh, freshly commissioned, and it had not even been out on its first mission yet, and it was going to do a test dive in the Atlantic, not far from the port of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. There were 59 people on this submarine, and five of them were officers, 51 of them were enlisted men. There were three civilian inspectors on board. And on that day, their test was to complete an emergency dive uh, because once you know, a submarine is underwater, it's very difficult for the, an enemy aircraft to locate that submarine. So they were doing a test dive. At 8.35 in the morning, the order was given to uh, prepare to dive. However, as that submarine began to dive and began to submerge itself, a catastrophe happened, and one of the main induction valves did not close. And so water began to pour, I believe, into the aft part of the submarine, which was the engine room, and that engine room began to flood. That valve had that, uh, it was a large opening that brought air into the engines when it was on the surface. That valve had somehow valve had somehow malfunctioned and opened up on the dive, and what was supposed to let air in on the surface was now letting water in and flooding that. You can find out about this as you begin to you can look it up on on the internet. You can find some little documentaries about it on YouTube and all of that kind of thing. And there was a great struggle that happened because. They were trying to get some of the doors closed in the submarine that kept, uh, you know, the, the water, it would keep the water in one part of the submarine, like an emergency door that would, that would close off, while it would give the rest of the crew, you know, uh, an opportunity to, to figure out an escape plan or, or how to, to right this situation. And so the compartments of this submarine they quickly filled with water, and unfortunately, in that part of the boat, there were some uh, servicemen, and 25 of them uh, perished by drowning in that compartment where there, that where that water had flooded in. the The submarine settled all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. At the point where it was at, it was 243 feet deep. The water was just a few degrees above freezing. And in the compartments of the submarine that, that remained uh, sealed off and watertight, there were 33 men who remained alive. The sub, it had some rockets and uh, flares on board that they began to try to fire to the surface. And it would one was like, it would be like a smoke bomb. So as it would hit the surface and explode, the, the smoke hopefully would be seen by any aircraft or any other uh, boats or ships or whatever in that area. And they could be used to then you know, rescue the sub. But it seemed like that over a period of time that there was no, no rescue that was going to happen. For four hours... They, they would shoot off these rockets. And, and after four hours, their sixth rocket was launched. And finally, another sub saw the smoke. And, of course, 
this began a, a chain reaction of events to, to get the right men, to get the right equipment, to get the right ships and, and all of this to this area to try to rescue these men that were trapped on the bottom of the ocean. At this point in time, if I understand correctly, an underwater rescue like this had never been successful. And tests uh, to rescue people had only been done in depths of about 20 feet. And here we have a sub with 33 men laying on the bottom of the ocean, 243 feet down. Of course, the survivors, they were wet, and of course the water was cold, and so the temperature began increasingly to drop in that uh, cabin where they were at. By 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you know, air was decreasing, and so carbon dioxide was building up and making the men drowsy. But on the surface, as they were getting ships and men and all of this together, there was a lot of activity happening on the surface. There was a rescue device. And right now, it escapes me what uh, the exact name of it, but it was like a rescue um, chamber. Some refer to it as like a, a, a bell kind of shaped like a bell, and it was a capsule that could be submerged in the water with, a, uh, with divers, you know, accompanying it and inside and all of that, and it could be attached to the escape hatch on the submarine, and then the hatch is opened, and, and the men trapped could go out the escape hatch into this rescue uh, uh, vehicle thing, and the rescue craft, I guess I should say. There's a better name for it, but I forgot the name of that. And so but what was happening, though, before that bell or that rescue craft was ever dropped, the diver was, uh, divers were going down. And, and this one diver, he put on 220 pounds of equipment with a 40-pound ballast around his waist. Okay? They had never really sent men down this far. And how you know, could they survive? And how long would their air last? And then how long before um, some other physical things begin to happen to them that would cause them to you know, lose focus or even lose consciousness? And so the divers, however, they got down to the boat. And what was happening inside the boat or the submarine was that there were the men in there, they had somehow, they had found some hammers and they were hammering on the inside of that submarine, hoping that the divers could somehow hear. Now, I've, I've read some conflicting stories and, and so I'm gonna throw this out. I'm not sure this is exactly 100% accurate, but there, you can find some stories about this rescue that say, that the, the people in the boat were tapping out uh, a, a message in Morse code with their hammers. Is there any hope? Is there any hope? Is there any hope? Is there any hope? And what it was, as they would hear, they could hear the diver as he dove down and as he hit the submarine and he began to walk uh, on that. They could hear his boots uh, on the outside. And so the, the, they, the men on the inside were trying to follow that, let them know this is where we are, this is where we are. And the man on, on the outside then was able to, to locate that and say, you know, yeah, we do have survivors. I can hear this uh, going on inside the submarine and we've got, there's, we've got to get these men out. And so the, the divers, they would listen intently to the dots and the dashes of the Morse code they would, that were spelling out the four words, is there any hope? Uh, never before this time had, uh, any, had there been any survivors of a sinking submarine. They had never been saved uh, from such a depth as this. Uh, even though there were, there were ships that uh, you know, were 240 feet up, up on the surface, uh, can you imagine what it was like? like to be one of those 33 
remaining men uh, on the bottom of the ocean uh, wondering, is there anybody that can save me? And is there anybody that can help me? Uh, knowing today uh, that the only help that they were going to receive uh, was help from above. Uh, amen. The only hope that they had uh, was that there was something above them that was going to reach down to them uh, and be able to pull them out uh, of that uh, submarine and pull them out of that watery grave. Uh, the only hope they had was hope from above and help from above. I'm preaching to somebody on this resurrection Sunday, uh, amen, that your life, uh, maybe you have made shipwreck in your life uh, and maybe things have brought you down uh, and the enemy perhaps has brought you to a place uh, that you think uh, and, and he wants to convince you that you would ultimately lead to your destruction. Uh, but I am here today uh, to tell you uh, that there is a God on the throne uh, and that there is a God who is alive. Uh, there is a God who rose from the dead. Uh, there's a God uh, who conquered uh, death and hell uh, and the grave uh, to save you, to rescue you. Uh, I am here today to tell you there's still hope uh, from above uh, and there's still help that's coming to you. Just hold on today. Uh, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, if you're asking yourself the question, is there any hope? Uh, I'm here to declare unto you by the power of the resurrection, there is still hope for you. Uh, you are not too lost. Uh, you are not too far gone. You are not too broken. Uh, you are not too inadequate. I'm here today to tell you there's hope uh, for you. Uh, there is hope for you today. Uh, Praise God, praise God. And so, amen, these men, they, they lowered down that rescue chamber and they attached it. And I think it took uh, like three or four trips uh, up and down for that, that craft to be able to rescue them. They would even overload it. It was only supposed to have a capacity of about seven. And they would put eight and nine into that and pull them up. And there was danger. It was a dangerous operation. And altogether, it took about 39 hours to rescue these men. But I am just here today again to preach to somebody. That's really, to be honest, church, that's all I want to preach to you today. That's really all I want to preach to you. Amen. Is that by the power of the resurrection, there's still hope for you. Uh, amen. I, you've got to get that message in your spirit and in your heart today. Amen. The, the world may have, have messed you up and you may have been dealt a bad hand today and you may be spinning your wheels, it seems, and you may be sitting in the wreckage of your life. Amen. But I want you to know that just like that diver, and this is actually a, a depiction, an artist's depiction of that submarine on the bottom. In fact, up at the top, you can't really see it, but on the top right, it says the USS uh, Squalus and Diver. And then down on the very bottom right, it has the author's name. And so you have the submarine on the bottom, and you got the diver coming down to it. That today, amen, uh, because Jesus Christ, he descended into to to hell. Uh, amen. Jesus Christ, uh, he descended. The Bible said, he that descended into the depths of the earth, he's already also ascended. Uh, I want you to know today uh, that the Lord, uh, he came down to you uh, at your lowest moment, at your darkest moment, at the moment that you felt trapped. Uh, I want you to understand today uh, there's help uh, that's coming uh, from the above. Uh, I will lift up mine eyes, the scripture said, unto the hills. Uh, from whence cometh my help. Uh, my help Help comes from the Lord uh, who made the heavens and the earth. Uh, I'm here today to tell you uh, that by the power of the resurrection, uh, help uh, is here. Help is here. Hallelujah. All together, can we clap our hands today? Oh, hallelujah. 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 I think somebody ought to stand to their feet while they clap their hands. Throw your hands in the air. Hallelujah. Thank God for his help today. Oh, thank you for your help today. Oh, hallelujah. 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 You do not have to stay dead if your trespasses and sin. But there is hope through the blood of Jesus and by the resurrection 
Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, ha, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, we just ought to offer some praise to him. He brought me out of the miry clay. His love lifted me. He placed me on a rock to stay. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. God bless you. Be seated today. Praise God. I, I didn't include these scriptures for Kayla to put on the screen for you today, but I did refer to them in the text message that I left you or sent to you yesterday. How many, by a show of hands, were you, uh, were you receiving text messages from me this week about Easter? Praise God. All right. Good. I hope those were a blessing, and I'm not asking for a pat on the back today, but I did it just so that every day our minds will be focused on what this week is all about. Praise God. And I, I'll tell you, I'm going to get back. I got a couple more things about this I want to share with you. But uh, the verse that I shared yesterday, or one of the verses, was from Psalm 16 and verse number 10. Now, this is David writing in the Psalms, speaking prophetically about the Lord Jesus, speaking about the, the coming Messiah. And speaking prophetically about that, that he, would, he would die and he'd be placed in the ground. But Psalm 16 and verse 10, in the King James Version, it says, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And so David was prophesying that the Messiah, yes, he was going to die, but he was not going to stay in that grave. There are a couple of other translations, and one of them I referred to it in the, in the text that I sent you, but the, the NIV, it says, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. And so there's, there's a couple of phrases I'm going to grab, and one of these is from the NIV. You will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. So that's the NIV. You won't abandon me. Everybody say, you won't abandon me. <laughs> and then the New Living Translation said, you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. So what this is telling us is that the Almighty God, the Eternal Spirit of God, right? We, we understand that God is a spirit and that His Spirit is eternal. And we understand that Jesus is the fleshly manifestation of the one true and living God. God was manifest in the flesh is what Paul tells us in one of his letters to Timothy. And that the, the word was made flesh, uh, John tells us in his gospel. And, and so we, we understand that. And so what this is talking about is that the eternal almighty spirit of God was not going to let the flesh the body, the fleshly body of Jesus stay in the grave. He wasn't going to abandon that body and he wasn't going to let that body stay there rot. Amen. Now I know that's a prophecy about Jesus and his resurrection, but Brother Ricky it ministered to me this week and I include it yesterday and it's still in my spirit. Amen. Because here's what, what the, the U.S. Navy and all the other military powers, they didn't just abandon that submarine and just leave it on the bottom of the ocean and just forget about the men that were, were in it. But they went to every length. Uh, they had to fly special uh, divers that had been 
specially tra- or divers that have been specially trained. They had to fly them from another place on the East Coast to this location. They had to get other ships, and, and the Coast Guard was involved, and other submarines. All of this had to take place uh, because they were not going to abandon that ship. Uh, and if the U.S. Navy and all of the other military powers, uh, if they cared enough about a ship with 33 men laying on the bottom of the ocean, uh, if they cared enough, I want you to know that they eventually, within a few months, by September of 1939, they had raised up that submarine from the bottom of the ocean, and they had made the necessary repairs on it. Uh, and uh, a little bit later, they actually uh, renamed it instead of the squalus. It was named the sailfish, I believe. Uh, and they recommissioned it and they sent it back uh, in into active duty. And it was active in the Pacific Theater of World uh, War II. Uh, and it's credited uh, with a sinking of, uh, of um, enemy ships uh, in the Pacific in World War II. What am I telling you today? Uh, if the Navy is not going to abandon a ship and leave it there to rot, I'm going to tell you, uh, amen, that God who loves you and God who created you, when you sink to the lowest place of hell, uh, my God, uh, he's not going to abandon you uh, and he's not going to leave you there to rot. He's not going to just walk away and say, forget about it. He's not going to walk and say, away and say they're not worthy, but he's going to go to every length. Uh, he's going to go uh, and exhaust every resource. Uh, why? Because you are worth saving. You're worth saving today. <laughs> and so, God, he's not abandoning you to the realm of the dead and he hasn't left you to rot in your sin. But he's sending help and hope from above to raise you up. And the only way he can do that is through the power of the resurrection. Because see, resurrection power is getting up power. Resurrection power is raising up power. <laughs> and so that's why every one of us today in this place, I, I, I don't want to be mean, but I am going to be plain spoken. If you don't have the Holy Ghost living inside of you, you don't have resurrection power inside of you. And so you're wondering, why can't I ever get up? Why do I have to, why do I just continually, you know, feel like I'm on the bottom of the ocean, uh, amen, with all the weight of the world on me? I'm going to tell you what, today, uh, there's somebody that's reaching down a helping hand, uh, amen, and saying, I'm going to tell you what, uh, amen, uh, if the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, uh, I'm going to tell you what the same spirit that, that got Jesus out of the grave is the same spirit that wants to get you out of your sin. Because he doesn't leave us. He doesn't abandon us and he doesn't leave us to rot in our sin. I know Sister Sandy, if I close right now, Sister Sandy might be frustrated with me. She's like, we just got down here. Amen. See, that's why I have to preach long, is to give her a chance to do the Sunday school lesson. Here's what I want to tell you. When, when they lowered that rescue capsule down, they actually they put hot water and hot coffee and hot soup in there. And so that when they were attached and sealed, boy, that'll preach right there. That rescue vehicle had to be attached to the escape hatch and sealed. Because if it wasn't sealed, then water would get in and destroy the whole thing. Are you attached to him and sealed by the Holy Ghost today? Come on, see, some of us, we need to check our seal Amen, because there's some things leaking into our life and leaking into our spirit, right? Amen. We need to check, check our seal and, and make sure we're attached and sealed today. Praise God. Man, would somebody just say, Pastor, you're preaching good today. Oh, man, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Amen. But they would put hot water 
and soup and coffee. And they would pass that down to the men in, in, or inside the, so that they could you know, begin to get some strength and, and some sustenance and warmth. And as the men realized that help was there and there was hope from above, <laughs> and they began to pass that food and coffee and stuff around, those that have researched this incident and documented it uh, said that the men inside the submarine asked the divers who were coming to their rescue. They said, after they received the food, they said, where's the napkins? Where's the napkins? Now, there's got to be something there that I can preach about that. <laughs> you know, Jesus, yeah, there's, there was folded napkins, you know, in the tomb of Jesus, right? And Brother, Brother Jay's got a revelation back there. Absolutely. Amen. Yes, sir. And, but see, it's exactly right. That hope inspired something in them. And they could say, we know there's more where that came from, and we're going to need some napkins. Because I'm going to tell you what, when hope arrives, Jesus said, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. Right? You can eat, he said, this, and, and you'll never be hungry again. But here's the thing about Jesus is that you can feed on him today and you feed on him tomorrow. You feast on his word today. You feast on his word tomorrow. Right? He told the woman at the well, you'll drink of this water and you'll never thirst again. Right? But what to me the napkins speak of is that maybe you splash a little bit and in the overflow a little bit. I mean, I, they, were, they were wet and cold down there. I don't know what a napkin mattered, but if it spoke to the fact that there's an abundance and there's overflow, and that means that I'm, I'm getting out of here today and there's more where that came from. I want you to know today, amen, what you're feeling right here in this service today, in this moment of praise and worship and adoration to the King of Kings, amen. This, this isn't all there is. There's more. And if you've been feasting today and you got a little bit messy handling worship and, and praise, that's all right. Praise God. We've got the napkins for you today. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 39 hours later, <laughs> that hope from above came down and rescued those men. 39 hours later, the last one was pulled up. As I said, several months later, that ship was brought to the surface and it was repaired and recommissioned and renamed. Well, that's a Holy Ghost message right there. The Lord wants to pull you up from the bottom to repair you, to rename you. That's what baptism is about. To rename you and to recommission you and sends you back into the battle. You may be on the bottom today, but you give Jesus some time, and through the power of the resurrection, he'll put you back in the battle. I could, I could have titled this from the bottom to the battle, but for some of us, I needed to title it from the bottle to the battle. Or you fill in the blank. I do want to tell you, Jesus can take you from the bottom. He'll rescue you. He'll reclaim you. He'll rename you. He'll recommission you. And he will re-engage you in the battle. That's what hope from above is about. The power of the resurrection today. Praise God. Would you stand with me? I should have stopped when y'all were worshiping a minute ago.
Praise God. I don't know, since I'm talking about ships, I don't know if the battle hymn of the Republic might be appropriate. I don't know. Just kidding. But uh, the old ship of Zion or something like that. Or I'm going to take a trip on the good old gospel ship. How about that? Right? Go sailing through the air. Praise God. The power of the resurrection today is our hope from above. But there are people here today, you're still on the bottom. We used to sing a song that said, like, down on the bottom, all hope was gone. Down on the bottom, I can't go on. Enemies surrounding me, laughing at my calamity telling me that there's no way to reach up to the light of day. But I'll be up again. Just you wait and see. Rough times will keep me down. They'll just send me to my knees. There while I'm in prayer, God will give the victory song because I'll be up again where I belong. But there's some folks today, you're still on the bottom. But can I tell you, there's help and there's hope for you in this service today in this atmosphere right now I I want us to take a moment and and pray and I want us to create an atmosphere of expectation here with your prayers can you join me can we do that let's ask the Lord to move powerfully in the next few moments of this service Jesus we love you Father we come to you right now God with an attitude God Lord, of of hunger, God, an expectation, Lord, for what you want to do in somebody's life, God, right now, on this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday, oh God, hallelujah. Lord, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, Lord, we put our trust in you, we put our faith in you, we put our hope, oh God, in you right now. Lord, I'm asking you, God, that you would have your way. I'm asking you, God, that you would bring hope, God, bring healing, lift somebody up today. God, from the bottom, Lord God, reclaim them, recommission them, renew them, re-engage them, God. Lord, put them in the battle. Lord, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Here's what I want to do today. If you've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you want to, in a moment when I ask you, I want you to step out from where you are and come to the front. Amen. If you're here today, and you need healing in your body, and you want someone to pray with you, we want you to step out and come to the front. If you're on the bottom today, and you're just kind of wondering which way is up, and how do I go forward from here, and you need somebody to pray with you about the direction your life is headed in, I want you to step out and come to the front. And here's what we would ask us all to do. We would ask us to repent. And to repent means to ask God to forgive us of our sins, and to make a physical or or, or mental, even an emotional shift in our mind where we turn around. We turn from the world and we turn to God. We turn from sin and we turn to God. And as we repent and then begin to worship the Lord Jesus, he fills us with the Holy Ghost. Amen. We began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives us the utterance. If If you're here and you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, and you want your sins washed away in the name of Jesus, Amen. We can do that today as well. But if you have a need, if you want the Holy Ghost, if you have a physical need, or you just need prayer for a situation in your life, amen, I got people here. Brother Fossum will help me, and and, uh, Brother Michael will help me, and Sister Roxanne will help me, and I know there's others that will help me today. Praise God. Brother Banks and different ones. Amen. Praise God. If you're here today and you want to be lifted up from the bottom, amen, you have a need in your life,